Hi, if you are starting in medium format photography, you might be looking around at cameras like the Maria and the um, Bronica, maybe even the Roliflex. However, I would suggest instead of spending three hundred or so pounds immediately, why not look at a folding camera and start with medium format and see how you'd like it. The great thing about medium format is the quality, it's flexible, it will enlarge well. The downside is you only get 12 to a film and you really, I would suggest, it's great to develop it yourself and then you can scan it yourself. A camera I really like is the Zeiss Netta. Zeiss were famous for doing things like the Super Iconta, the Iconta. The Netta was the most basic of the models. Now it might have been basic in name and basic in price, however, the quality of this little camera might really surprise you. If we start, the great thing about folding cameras is the size, so that's a nice size which will easily go into a rucksack or bag, and you simply press the front, the bottom at the top to get the front out. You have a Nova lens, some of them will have a Tessa lens and that's obviously the slightly better lens, but I've been delighted with the quality of a Nova lens. Again, they vary on aperture. This is a 4.5. Now, in the days where we've got lenses of 1.5, etc., 4.5 might seem a little slow. However, back in 1957, this was a moderately fast lens. You have to manually focus, and this is set, this camera is set in feet. Plus, you have to set the aperture here. Sorry, the aperture here from 4.5 up to 22. There's a very convenient red dot in the middle, um, just by f11, and that's a sort of <coughs> fail safe. The shutter speeds go from B to a three hundredth of a second. Again, there were various models and quite often you will get various shutters and various shutter speeds. This is a moderately high spec one and it goes from a second, well B, one second up to three hundredth of a second. So when you come to use them, Obviously, you focus here, and again, there is a red fail safe by um, almost infinity, um, which you can set it to. Or I normally guess and rate thinking a person is about six foot, so how many people? That's how I normally do my focusing. Or we can use a range finder. So if I'm looking at this, I've got a lamp over here, which is about six feet. So I'll set that to 6 feet, I'm going to put my uh, shutter speed to 25 of a second and I'm going to go down to f4.5 and to actually, I haven't got film in here so I can use it, to set the shutter you bring this little spring over here, that's the camera prime and then just shoot, there you are, and wind on. You have a mirror, uh, not a mirror, you have a red door at the back which you can close but that gives you your number of exposure. Very easy to open, obviously film goes in there over to the spool to then actually that would be where the film comes so I would need to move this to there and then you can just wind on. The spools come out simply by pressing this outwards Pop the empty spool here, bring this out. Some other cameras like the Fortlander have quite complex little mechanisms here, but this is just on the spring here. So put the film in, bring it over, wind to the start, close until you get to one. Now, there's quite a few different folders out there. The great thing about this one is the quality, how it was made. These bellows, the Adva cameras are lovely sharp lenses. However, the uh, 
lubricant can become very stiff in the aquifers and the bellows have the tendency to leak. The bellows they used on these size cameras and on the vault landers rarely leak. They can leak but I, well I've never known them leak. If you are buying one and need to test it the best thing is in the darkened room to get a torch in a darkened room pop the torch thing there and see if you've got any light leaks or you can do this ray and with the torch. So and to pop a ray very gently. This is a very simply designed camera in one sense but its simplicity I think underlines what a well-made camera it is. Every function seems to work well in my um, use of this particular camera. I've used quite a lot of them. Occasionally you can get shutter issues so that is the first if you are buying one the first thing I would check is the shutter okay. Second thing I would check is fungus and again when you're buying a used camera fungus can be again an issue. The prices of these are quite interesting. For a long time you could get them for about £20. Someone's advertising one at the moment on eBay for £200 which I think is a slightly stupid price um, but that could be a really special one I don't think it is. Um, I would expect to pay between 20 and 50 pounds. Um, quite often you get slight problems with the enamelling which shows it's been very well used. However if the shutter is working and it's clean it wouldn't particularly bother me if it's been well used. As I said I've used them quite a lot. I will put some images on the end of this um, video which I hope proves what a lovely usable camera it is. So if you're thinking about getting into medium format don't forget that the basic Zeiss might give you images that you are very pleased with. Bye for now.